You already know that you don't need a fancy camera to get started on YouTube. Even this intro is filmed with my phone. This is great news because not all of us have the option to invest in a camera when we're getting started. So the question becomes, how can we use our phone to the best of its abilities? What's going to be the best phone setup to ensure the highest video quality when filming? Is there gear that you can use to help make your life simply easier as a YouTuber without breaking the bank? As always, timestamps are in the description down below, so let's just jump in. To ensure the highest quality when filming, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take a look at your phone settings. It doesn't matter whether you have an iPhone or an Android, both are going to give you great video quality these days. So let's jump into our settings for both of these phone types and make sure that everything is set and ready to record at its highest quality. If you have an iPhone, you're going to go to your settings, scroll down to the camera option, and here is where you can can adjust your settings to your liking. As you can see, there's for video, slow-mo, cinematic. Basically, when you adjust any of the settings in one of those sections, if you take a look at your camera and you go to video mode, you're adjusting the settings on those options on the bottoms. For regular vlogging or day-to-day -day filming, you could have the video settings set to 1080 at 30 frames per second with enhanced stabilization on. I like to keep it at these settings because it's default for like a YouTube video, 1080p. Also, it takes up less storage space so if you're just doing casual vlogs, regular day-to-day -day recording, that's the settings that I would do. For slow-mo or when you choose to film with the slow-mo camera, I would set that to 1080p at 120 frames per second. This is gonna make it as crisp as possible without taking up too much storage space again. And then for cinematic mode, this is where I would go to 4K at 24 frames per second. Cinematic mode, I don't use often. I feel like it's mostly for like filmmakers videographers, like people who have a lot of experience with setting up lighting and making that shot or like a shot as cinematic as possible. So I don't find myself using that one often for regular content creators. I just stick to my main camera. If you have an Android, what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your camera and make sure it's on video mode. Click the settings in the top right. And the first thing you wanna do is make sure video stabilization is on. This will help balance any shakiness when you're vlogging. Next, you're gonna open up advanced advanced recording options to turn on high bitrate and HDR 10 plus. Finally, you could go back to your camera view and make sure FHD 30 is selected up at the top. This will record the video at 1080p, 30 frames per second. I recommend watching this video here by Smartphone Filmmaking Pro for a deeper dive on your Android settings and further explanation on the different features. I'll be sure to link his video down below in the description for easy access. With your phone ready to record, let's get into gear. First, I'm gonna go over individual gear options that you could use to level up your filming experience and what to look for in these things if you ever wanna do shopping on your own. Then after going over each item individually, I'll show you different setup options options or ways that you could piece gear together based off setups that I've actually tested and recorded with so that you could see different price ranges of different setups that you could have. I'll go over a setup option that's under $50, one under $100, and one under $200. The first piece of equipment that will make your life easier is a tripod. If you go to Amazon right now, there are so many different tripod options that you could have. It really just depends on what you're looking for as a creator. You could have little handheld options like this. This is great for vlogging, or you could do a stand-up tripod if you're doing sit-down videos like this. When doing your research and picking out a tripod that best fits for you, you wanna pay attention to a few things. First things first, is making sure it either comes with a mount or you're also buying a mount for it. This is going to be the thing that lets your phone attach to the tripod. So make sure there's a mount. When you're looking at the mount, I like to make sure it has this little section up top. It's like a little port that you could attach microphones, a light, just like a little option to add more attachables that we'll go over a little bit later. If you're doing sit down talking videos or you wanna take photos, you could also look for tripods that come with a Bluetooth remote so that you could press record from far away. That's something you could pay attention to. A great option available on Amazon right now is the R-Day tripod. It comes with the mount and the Bluetooth remote for $14. I will say the legs are a little bit more flimsy. So if you don't plan on mounting it on your dashboard on your car while driving, could be a good option. One that I use, this is the one that I use the most often is the Manfrotto tripod. This one was $17. It did not come with the mount. So I had to buy the mount separately. Unlocks. 
puts the phone in, locks it in place. So I had to buy the mount separately for $21. Another option is the Joby Gorillapod. This is not <laughs> the Joby Gorillapod. I could not find it for the life of me. We have it. It's the one that has like the bendable arms. I will have to find it and put a little video here, but it, like the arms bend, you could wrap it around things to basically mount it to anywhere. That's such a popular one that content creators use. The Joby Gorilla Pod is $19. Of course, you'd have to buy a mount separately. If you're like, oh my gosh, mount for $21, that's ridiculous. There's this mount, this exact one that you could get on $9 for Amazon. Like I said, it has the mount so you could screw it on and the little port up top for you to attach microphone lighting, all the things. So there's a $9 mount option as well. I'll be sure to link all items that I'm talking about down below in the description. And just remember pricing could change from the time that I filmed this video. Prices could go up, prices could go down. I'm not in charge of the pricing. The brand is, the company is. So if you're like, Millie, you said it was $9 and now it's 10. I'm sorry. <laughs> Next, let's talk about microphones. Of course, you could use the internal mic that's built into your phone, but that's not what this video is about. You, you want, want gear. gear. So if you're looking for a way to set up your audio, there's plenty of microphone options out there. The most cost-effective options are going to be ones that attach directly onto your phone and then picks up your voice from whatever distance you're holding the camera away from yourself. With this, you have options like the Movo mic. This mic is $29 on Amazon. And then you have the Rode Video Micro mic. This is $42 comes with this and this attaches onto your mount as so with this Rode video micro mic, you do have to get two other items to make sure it could actually plug into your phone. So these wires here, you gotta get one of these and you gotta get one of these. We'll go over pricing in a little bit for these, but I just wanted to say that before you're like, oh, I'll get this. And then you're like, surprise, it doesn't plug into your phone because you need to buy two other things. So you gotta have these two, this part plugs into the mic here, and then this one plugs into your phone. And of course you could also choose the Bluetooth microphone option. Typically this will come with two pieces. One is the mic or transmitter that's attached or clipped directly onto you. And then the receiver is attached to your phone. The most common one that I see across YouTube is the mic that I'm using right now. This is the Rode Wireless Go. Literally it's attached to me. <laughs> Not gonna lift up my shirt. That'd be silly. But the thing with this one is it's about like a $250 investment. So for a more cost friendly option, you could go with something like this, the PQ, P, the PQ, I don't know why they named it this. You could go with the P Q R Q P wireless lavalier mic for $23. This is a popular one that I see on TikTok. This piece, you would clip it directly onto yourself while this piece plugs into your phone. Let's compare the actual audios for each of these options so that you could hear the difference between all of them. This is what the internal iPhone microphone sounds like. This is what the Movo attachable mic sounds like. This is with the Rode Video Micro mic. And this is with the PQRQP. Bluetooth microphone. I don't really have anywhere to clip it on to me, but imagine if it was like here, this is what it would sound like. When choosing which mic is going to be the best one for you, there's a few things to keep in mind. What are you going for? Are you going for ease, simplicity, quick on the go? If you're going for something quick on the go, the Movo mic would be my preferred option. So if you see yourself being further or at different distances away from your camera, then that's when you could go with a Bluetooth one like this. Something to keep in mind with these is if you have loose clothes and it's like rubbing on the mic, you'll hear that like, like that's no fun. Nobody likes that. So if you have loose clothes or even your hair or jewelry or your skin rubbing against it, just pay attention to that. Rode is just a very trustworthy, trust sturdy, strong brand. You could always count on their gear lasting you a really long time. So if you want that durability, I would go with Rode. And then the final thing to just like be aware of is with some of these, when you have them plugged into your phone and they're recording, if you try to listen back, you might not be able to listen back to your audio. You would have to unplug it from your device to listen to the audio back. If you get one of these and you're like, I can't hear anything, just unplug, 
mic and uh, you'll hear everything back. Now, this video is not sponsored by a brand because I wanted to sponsor it myself. So if you're a YouTuber or you wanna be a YouTuber or any sort of content creator, I just wanna let you know that I have so many resources on my channel and my website. For example, I have the YouTube Starter Workshop Bundle, which is a video bundle teaching you basically everything that you need to know to get started on YouTube from how to set up your channel with SEO tags, titles, and descriptions. I even have a YouTube script template that is in the video bundle that I use on my videos to increase engagement. And if you're somebody who's not in the place to invest right now, that is completely okay. I have a free YouTube workbook called the Ultimate YouTube Starter Workbook that has over 20 pages of goodness, plus this YouTube channel. I try to make sure that you always walk away with actionable steps after every video. So if you're not already subscribed, that's another free way that you could show love, support to my channel and everything that I'm doing. So that is all. Thank you for letting me sponsor my own video. <laughs> Let's talk about lighting. Obviously your best source of light will be natural lighting, filming by a window, any sort of natural lighting will do. I remember my last apartment, bottom floor, under somebody else who had a patio. It was dark. It was a cave. There's no natural lighting. If you're somebody who does not have that advantage, you're gonna want some lighting. For your videos, if you plan to do sit down talking videos like this, you could probably get away with a ring light tripod combo, like the R Day 14 inch selfie ring light with the 62 inch tripod stand. On Amazon, there's a lot of ring light options and most of the options are 10 inch, but I like a little bit wider because I feel like it covers more surface area of my face when filming. But if you're doing vlogging and you have something like this that you want something more lightweight, easy to move around, compact. My personal favorite is the Mike Toy LED light. This is $36. It comes with, let me show you, let me show you. So it comes with this clip where you could like clip it onto your phone for light. You could also, instead of having the clip adapter, you can have this adapter. Again, this is where it slides directly onto that port that we talked about earlier. Light goes right up top. It also comes with a diffuser box to soften the lighting a little bit if you feel it's too harsh and different colored filters. So you can put these screens. There's like a red, green, blue, I think a yellow that you could put into the box and then have this on here so that it has a different color, make it more cinematic and dramatic. It comes with a lot of really cool things. Look how bright that is, like, come on. This thing's powerful. This is awesome. If you get one thing from this video, have it be this. Oh, this is battery operated, by the way. So it comes with a charger. Honestly, I feel like the battery life is pretty good because I have not charged it yet since I got it. <laughs> I mean, I've only like used it a handful of times for like TikTok videos, but I haven't charged it yet. We'll see when it dies. <laughs> this is what it looks like with no lighting at all in my office. I don't have any lights on. I'm just using natural lighting from the window. Everybody says natural lighting. But when I add the Mexitoy boom lighting, this is what it looks like. You can adjust the brightness. So I could bring the brightness down to make it a little softer. Let's do all the way down so you can see all the way down and all the way up. You could also adjust the um, coolness. So this is warm, super warm. <laughs> the mic is in the way. I'm sorry if you're hearing that. And then super cold, cool. Oof, don't look directly into it. And then this is kind of like a balance between the two. The final section is our etc section before going into different pairings and groupings of the gear that we've talked about. We're gonna talk about attachments, accessories, and storage. So something that I like to do is use attachable lenses on my phone. Why use attachable lenses? Let me tell you. Okay, when you're filming, on your phone and you're using the wide angle lens, the aperture is smaller than the default lens, meaning it doesn't allow in as much light. It's not gonna be great in a low light situation. Quality might be a little bit more fuzzy on the wide angle lens. That's where an attachable lens could come in handy because then you could film on 1x, the default mode, so that it has a better aperture, it allows in more light, you could be in a low light setting and the quality could still be strong, and then you attach a wide angle lens to still have that wide effect. 
The cost effective option is an Amazon kit. It's a three in a one kit that comes with a macro lens, wide lens, and a fisheye lens. And this one is for any phone. It doesn't have to just be iPhone. It's Android, iPhone, whatever. And again, it's one of these clips. You clip it right over the camera and then that's your wide angle effect. This kit is $18 on Amazon. This was like my tried and true little trusty best friend when I was taking a lot of Instagram photos back in my Instagram photo era. I will put some pictures up that I used these lenses for not the wide angle lens on my phone. But if you really want to have like the best quality, my favorite is Sandmark. I love the Sandmark lenses, not sponsored as you know. They're just so cool. Unfortunately, they are only for iPhone at the moment. So if you have an iPhone, you can get them and they're on the pricier end. So this might be something you add to like a Christmas list or your birthday wish list. This wide lens from Sandmark is $129. It is heavy. It is heavy. Comes with two options for attaching to your phone. Has a phone case option where you take this back part off, you screw it onto the phone case and then you put the case directly onto your phone. Love that because it doesn't move. It doesn't like with this. What if you're like vlogging and then like, oh, I hit that and then so if like it gets hit, it gets messed up. So it comes with both options, quick on the go, just gonna attach this real quick, or like, hey, this is my try and trusty, sturdy little buddy, gonna put this on, gonna vlog, it's gonna be a grand old time. Here are some visuals comparing the iPhone settings to the Amazon attachable lenses. You have the iPhone default, the iPhone wide view, and the Amazon attachable wide lens. So you could compare the difference between all of them. And then here are some visuals comparing the iPhone settings to the Sandmark attachable lens. And then finally, let's just look at all of the wide lens options. You have your default phone wide lens, the Amazon wide lens, and the Sandmark wide lens. Are attachable lenses 100% needed? Absolutely not. No, no they're not. But I think they're pretty fun. And they're a great option if you find yourself in low light scenarios often when filming. So far, we've talked about using the back camera. This is gonna be the best option for high quality. And if you're somebody who finds yourself having a hard time making sure you're in frame, you're like, I don't even know if I'm filming my face right now, you're gonna love this next accessory option. You could do a mirrored phone case. They have these on Amazon for $17. Basically, you get to use the case as a mirror to make sure like, okay, yeah, I'm actually in frame. There's nothing in my teeth, you know? So that's just like a fun hack if you need that extra confidence boost. Just make sure when you're filming, you're not looking at yourself, you're actually looking into the camera. Next we have camera wipes. You don't need these. You really don't, but I wanted to include them. I'll record videos and show them to my husband. He's like, why is that blurry? Did you clean your lens off first? And I was like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> and so I had to buy these to make sure that I would remember to clean off my lens. It wasn't so much that like I use these all the time to clean off my lens. It was like, I paid money. I better make sure I'm wiping my lens off now, my camera, my phone, because you hold it up to your face. You put it down when you're eating food and you put it in your ketchup, you know? So you really wanna make sure that you're wiping off your lens before you're filming. You could get like a huge pack of these on Amazon. I didn't put the price in the script, so it's probably like seven bucks. I don't remember. I'll put a picture here. And then finally we have storage, because I know somebody's gonna ask about storage if I don't mention it, because Filming on your phone is obviously gonna take up a lot of storage space. So what can you do to free up space on your phone if you're using it as your main source of camera when making YouTube videos? An option is to move your videos after filming them to an external hard drive of sorts. This honestly could be a whole video on its own because there are so many different types of options for doing this depending on what kind of phone you have, what kind of laptop you have. Is it an Apple product? Is it a Windows product? Because different hard drives will work with different things. Do you plan on using it for blah, 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 blah. Like this could be a whole video in and of itself, but I'm just gonna talk about a few gear 
options. And if you were like, Millie, oh my gosh, you're doing a full video. I need to know more about this. Just let me know in the comments below and I'll make like a further deep dive on this topic. Uh, but we're just gonna talk about quick gear. To just get some videos off of your phone, but still have them saved in the future, what I would recommend is getting an adapter of your choice, however you wanna store your files. If you wanna backup files to a flash drive or other USB based external hard drive, you can use a lightning to USB adapter that's $12.99 on Amazon like this. Or if you want to back up your files to an SD card, you can get an Apple lightning to SD card camera reader for $28.99 like this. For tutorials on how to use both of these, I recommend watching this video from Kamani Brown. He shows a tutorial for both options in one video. So I'll link that video down in the description below. And while you're there, make sure to show him some love on his video, like, comment, just let him know he's doing some great things over there. Let's go show some support to other creators. Alrighty, let's piece some of these together for some really cool creator gear options. Starting with the $50 setup. If you're someone who wants the most cost-effective pairing, this is going to be your under 50 setup. What you're going to do is get the R-Day tripod that comes with a mount and Bluetooth remote if you want it. That's $14.99 and the Movo mic for $29.95. I don't have the R-Day tripod with me, so just ignore this one, but R-Day is like a very common creator brand on Amazon. They have a lot of creator products on there and it's also a highly reviewed one. So it is a great, simple, quick and easy setup where if you're like, okay, I just want something, something to invest in to feel a little bit official, this is gonna be a great pairing. Together, they would be $45. If you want to step this up just a little bit and go a little over that $50 option, you could get the three in one lens kit from Amazon. That way you have the attachable lens for if you're in a low light situation with the Amazon lens kit, our day tripod and a Movo mic, you're looking at a $63 setup. Now for our option that's under $100, what you're going to do is get the Manfrotto tripod. It's $17, it's a little bit stronger, more sturdy than the R-Day tripod. You will have to buy a mount separately. So this is the $9 mount that you could use for the Manfrotto tripod. You also have the Movo mic, $29.95, and the Mexitoy LED light, $30. All together, this setup right here is $86. If you wanted just all Manfrotto products, so you want the Manfrotto mount and the tripod, you don't want the $9 option, the total with this actual exact setup would be 98. I feel like a car model, you know, or like Price is Right, where they're like, <laughs> like I feel like that. <laughs> I'll try to be less cheesy. I don't know, it's hard not to. Now for the option that's under $200, Manfrotto tripod, Manfrotto mount. You're also gonna use the Rode mic. The Rode mic is $42. With the Rode mic, you're gonna need those two wire attachments. So you have one $8.72, the other one is $7.99, and some sort of light attachment. With this setup, I don't love the battle between like Mexitoy light up top and the Rode mic. I feel like it gets a little top heavy. So there is actually another mic called the Ariani LED light. That Ariani LED light is $30 and it attaches here to the back of your phone. So with all of these, you got the mic, you got the tripod, you have a light of some sort. This whole setup would be, let's attach this for the looks and everything. There we go. This whole setup would be $127. And of course, there's so many different ways you could up level this one alone. You could add the Sandmark lens if you're in that low light situation. There's so many things that you could do based off of the gear that we talked about in this video to really create your own unique best vlogging setup. Once you have the setup that you're looking for, the next step is going to be film and post your videos so that you could start growing your channel. And to help you get your first 1,000 subscribers, I recommend watching this video next where I share with you the five steps that you could start implementing today to grow faster on YouTube. All right, I'll see you there. Follow your joy, bye. That's not gonna work, is it? <clears throat>